Gentlemen, welcome to Ring Classic Episode 10, the final episode of Ring Classic. I am your commentator, as always, Mark Spencer, and we are kicking off with a clash of tag teams that have been mainstays for the whole run of this company. And out first is the War Boy. Now, everybody here, a lot of times, when something comes to an end, when a a promotion gets sold or merged or ended, canceled, what have you, closes its door, you don't get, you don't get a swan song. You don't get to know. And tonight, every one of these competitors know that they're going to be stepping into that ring classic ring for the last time. So you're going to get all the pomp, all the circumstance, all of the energy. But you're also going to get all the intensity, all the desperation. Nobody wants to be the guy that failed at the end. Everybody wants to be the last man standing. And spoiler, whoever's holding the tag team titles at the end of this, whoever's holding the world title at the end of this, they got a job. They're going to go on to that Super Pro Championship Grand Prix, and they're going to make their case for staying on with gold. But everyone else, at best, this is an audition. At best. At worst, this is the night when you determine how the world is going to remember you. When we look back on Ring Classic, and when we look back on Annex, the former tag team champions here, are we going to think of them as Goliaths or as failures? And the bell is wrong. We're starting off with the two big men in the ring first, Jason McKay in the blue, Warboy Crom in the red. Of course, you don't necessarily see too many chromal variations among the war boys these are the all black classic look but rocking the red here tonight and of course jason mckay he squeezes here trapezius dropping the prom down problem with the back elbow big right hand trying to take control forces owen parker off of the apron parker now coming up on the other side Jason McKay getting comfortable. Oh, Warburg Crom going right after Owen Parker. Jason McKay now had assumed that Crom was coming in. Instead, he's got to go out and get him, but not so successful so far. Crom going to town on Annex. Very anti-imperialist, this crowd. Five. At a five count now. Crom missing the right hand, missing the boot. Owen Parker starting to fight back. Crom sends him into the ring. Referee at a seven count. Crom makes his way back in, fights the legal man again. Carries McKay like a baby across the ring into that ring post. Now Owen Parker and Warboy Haas making their way in. And now Parker doing the same thing to Haas that was just done to his tag team partner. 
A little bit of pizzazz, a little bit of showmanship, a little bit of uh, one-upsmanship. Now tying up the legs, going up under the chin, got that nice bow and arrow. Parker kicks him off, Irish whip. Oh no, Haas fighting out of it. Oh, going for that big diving clothesline, got blocked. Parker saw it coming a mile away. Belly to belly. Beautiful slam. Now Parker going up top. Diving off. Beautiful splash. Goes for the cover. One, two. No, not a two count. Parker now. Laying the smack down on Warboy Haas. Clutch now, not super tucked under the chin, so it's almost completely a net crank. Oh, and there, nice whip by Haas. Coming off the springboard, springboard bulldog. Tagged Carl back into the match. Carl comes in, kick to the gut. Going up, looking for a power bomb, maybe. Wait, walking him out. And taking the trash out. Jason McKay just forced to watch. Crom seemingly content to let Owen Parker lie until he's ready for another power bomb. If once is fun, twice is twice as nice. Oh! Oh, Parker trying to fire back up at Crom, and Crom just sends him into the stratosphere. And now sending him into the barricade. Six. At a six count now, Owen Parker is down. I'd be curious if the Warboys want to take a count out. No, Crom breaks the count. I said, I made a big deal earlier about the, the, the pageantry of working on the final episode of Ring Classic. And it's a big question. Do you want to win or do you want to go out on your shield, right? Like, do you want to take the easy way, even if it might cost you? Who's to say? Jason McKay. Freaking up Crom into the fireman's carry. Crom wants no part of it. Now it's McKay with the back elbow. Makes him back up in the fireman's carry. Won't be denied. Hangs him out to dry. Crom with the up kick. Beautiful lariat. Looks like an STO maybe. Tagging in Haas, and now it's Haas. Oh, eating a big boot from Jason McKay to Clan McKay. One, two, and that might be it. No, Haas kicks out. That's a lot of weight to move off your shoulders. McKay ain't no small guy. It's now Owen Parker making his way in. Haas kicks him off. Oh, stunner under the ropes. And another one for McKay for good measure. Parker trying to find his way in. Haas hauls him out, maybe got baited a little bit. Parker has to be very careful. Crom decides to come down from that corner. He's gonna be in a lot of trouble. Right now, managing to do the job on his own. Spanish fly! And a geez, standing shooting star press. He's feeling it. We saw Parker apply this earlier, and now it's Haas with the bow and arrow, this time on the outside. Not going to get him a victory. It's got to cause a lot of pain. 
take it where he can get it. Referee had a six count now. Haas has to be careful not to hold it on too long. And Parker slips out. Haas back into the ring. Back out of the ring. Breaks the count. Tries to press the offense on Parker. Parker had the full Nelson. Had to opt for a straight jacket. German suplex onto the outside. And Haas's bell has been rung. Now trying to get some bell ringing in of his own. Fighting back. Big combinations. Big striking combinations. Parker's trapped up against that barricade. Nowhere to go. He's got to try to scoot out and around. And Haas sends him right back into the barricade. You know, a lot of people talk about ring awareness, but in this sport, you've got to be aware of the whole arena because you could fight anywhere within that 10-second count. Now Parker rolling over, manages to avoid whatever Haas is planning. Tags in Jason McKay. Haas gets a hold of him. Beautiful DDT. And now got a scoop slam for Parker. Haas may be frustrated that Parker managed to get that tag and now make him pay for it. Ignoring the offense of Jason McKay in the meantime until he can't no more. Jason McKay lands a beautiful big boot and then just slings him across the ring by his ankles. Now he's looking in the corner. Oh, McKay looks for grab something, but Haas got out of there. And another beautiful TDT. Picks him up. Super kick. Corkscrew. Shooting star splash. He goes for the cover. One, two. No, not enough. We saw Crowd come in there at the end, thinking he might have to stop Parker for breaking it up, but it became unnecessary for both men. Wait, Jason McKay caught a super kick. Lays him out with a lariat. But Haas makes the tag to the big man, Warboy Crom, and Crom's feeling it. He's fired up. Right into the fireman's carry, F10. One, two, hoo hoo. Very close. And now, don't make it complicated, keep it simple. Slamming his opponent's head into the mat. And now already tagging in Warboy Haas. Warboy Haas wants some more of Jason McKay. Super kick. That time it lands. Goes for the cover. One, two. Oh, Parker in time to break it up. And now Haas getting a hold of him. And tosses him outside. He's going up. He's going up top. Warboy Crom blocking Owen Parker. Beautiful dive but not the move that he usually finishes with. Going up to the opposite corner. Swanton bomb. One, two, three, and the War Boys walk away victorious on the 10th and final episode of Ring Classic. Nobody tell them that Theory Road's like eight years old. Nobody tell them. It's a good song. I mean, they're saying Wild Boys. I think they think he's saying War Boys, but he's saying Wild Boys. I know, it's weird. Of course. Crumb! That is not street legal here. He's on the wrong side of the car. But we move on to our next match as the X Factor takes on Oliver Awesome. But it's sure to be a colossal clash of styles. Of course, the X Factor, very much an MMA practitioner, very much a crossover athlete. Oliver Awesome, no, no slouch in the technical fighting arena right like no slouch when it comes to kickboxing he knows the submissions but his skill is in sort of the americanized indie pro wrestling style it means keeping a lot of distance and hitting those big strikes at key moments in the match you know nothing that you know he's a high flyer he can hit anything from anywhere of course when we started this at the very beginning of Ring Classic, 
This man was the champion. Now he lost that title to the guy defending it here. And it's been like 87 years and Ebak is still champion. And that's impressive in of itself, but it also says a lot about Oliver Awesome that that is the guy it took to end his reign. And now, can the X Factor factor in to the tapestry of a career that is Oliver Awesome in Ring Classic? Of course, we have Oliver Awesome, who is sort of the, uh, the, the stalwart of Ring Classic, one of them, at least. Him and Annex, I think, are pretty good arguments for that role. Meanwhile, the X Factor, he didn't join too much later than when Ring Classic started, but he's sort of been on the fringes. It's never really built up a lot of momentum. Of course, he had that feud with Aiden Bourne, came out on, probably on the better end of that. But I don't know if he's been in the ring with a guy in that upper echelon the way that Oliver Awesome is. So this is going to be sort of a test for both guys. Can one guy climb and can one guy stay on top? It's really the, uh, the question here. And the question is, can Oliver Awesome solve for the X Factor? Let's get it to now. See who gets to set the pace, set the distance early. Exchanging strikes. X Factor trying to come in with that body shot gets blocked. Oliver Awesome manages to find a couple of his own. And then a beautiful exploded suplex. Catch a suplex. Dragon whip. Dragon screw, rather, by X Factor. And now he's landing those body shots, and those are going to pay dividends the longer this match goes. Beautiful hip toss, sending him. Almost would have probably been in the third row if it weren't for those ropes. And now this is a difference that I didn't talk about as they were coming out because of the stylistic changes. But Oliver Awesome, not a small guy. The X Factor, a very large man. Right, you don't have to put that disclaimer on the X Factor. Oh, he's not a small guy. No, he's a big dude, dude. Now, looking for the arm bar on Oliver Awesome. Captured in the leg. Awesome has to free that leg. If he could turn it out, there he goes. He gets it, he turns over, and he's out. Oliver Awesome, not a practitioner. MMA, but... He's been around the block enough to learn a couple of tricks. But some tricks, there's just no solution for getting kicked in the head and power bomb. You know what I mean? That's just what happened. Like, it is what it is, dog. Second, big right hand. More shots to the gut. Oliver Awesome with a big spinning back kick to the gut of his own. Missing that moonsault off of it. And you got to think that opportunity that he just failed to capitalize on, not going to come around a lot. As the X-Factor continues to pour on more offense. Suplex. Oh, my God. He just hit him with a Steiner driver, dog. One. Two. No, Oliver Awesome still has enough in the tank. And pulling him up. Looking for a hand. Choke. Backbreaker. Doesn't have pin. One, two, no, Oliver Awesome kicks out. Awesome now fighting back. Beautiful backbreaker of his own. Not quite as impactful as the choke, but he's got to pour it on now. He can't let him up. Attacking the legs. The tree trunk, as it were, gets up to the top rope. Going far, going high. Beautiful frog splash. Not going for the cover, interestingly. Wants to pour on more punishment. 
And this is one of the situations where the X Factor is most nullified. Goes with Ben. Only one count. If Oliver can stay on his feet and he can keep X Factor down, it's not really a, a place of danger for him. Standing Moonsault is fired up and now picking X Factor up. Oh, it immediately pays for it. Slips a punch, lands a gut shot of his own and hangs him out to dry. Let's recover. One, he's on the he's on the rope. He's on the rope. The ref did sit. The ref did sit in the X Factor. Doesn't care to correct him. Other awesome had his foot on the rope. And the ref just did not see it. Something something tried to something on me. And this is not the way, you know, X-Factor seems pleased with himself, but this is not the way that you want to end your tenure in ring classic for either guy. You don't want to get screwed over and you don't want to screw someone over, regardless of how much you can celebrate. But besides the point, in this pattern of veterans, upstarts, now we have Iku Itami going up against Connor Gates. And Iku Itami, a controversial figure recently. He got two really good wins over Jamie Clark. Then was put in a tag team with Jamie Clark and bailed on him. Jamie Clark still won that match. And as a reward, he's going to get a tag championship opportunity. So Iku Itami kind of only fucked himself over and a lot of people have been debating did was that like called for him? right because if you go back to the first match Jamie Clark arguably took him a little lightly and he almost ran the kid over until almost a, a very similar situation I believe it was a rope break that the ref didn't see or it was a roll up it was one of those things that guys say doesn't count but it counts they had a rematch, and Ikutami won that definitively. So why hold the grudge? Why keep pushing it? And who's out on that tag match opportunity? That tag title opportunity? Still don't know who Jamie Clark's partner is going to be for that. And it should be very interesting. So I guarantee you that whole roster's got their hand up, right? Everybody wants to have those belts and continue their careers, right? Nobody wants to have a question mark as far as when our next paycheck is going to be. They want that spot on Super Pro Titan Clash. But I have not talked about the man standing across the ring from Iku Tommy in this match. And that's Connor Gates. Connor Gates is a bad man. He's decorated. He's experienced. He's crafty. He's mean. He could be honorable, but he's mostly crafty and mean. Yatami slends him into the corner. Connor Gates fights out of it. Shot to the gut. Both men tie up. Nothing happening there. Oh, Connor slips a punch, lands one of his own. Oh! Back suplex, kick to the back. Catch him on the way down. Oh, not sure what he was going for there. Equal Tommy try able to avoid it. And maybe killed him. Okay, he's moving, so he's fine. But Jesus Christ. Arm breaker. Now tying it up into Fujiwara. Connor Gates probably still reeling from that neck crank. As Ikuitami continues to target the upper limbs. Picks him up. Absolute classic. Suplex. Punches to the face. And it should be noted, for that tag match, Ikutami came out in new gear, like new flashy gear. Went back to his triple six dojo attire for this one. A sign of humility, possibly, maybe a sign of embarrassment. But we'll have to see how it plays out. Stop it on the arm. Oh, missing the leg drop. Connor Gates make the best of it. Whoa, goes for the Inzaguri. Iku sees it coming. Manages to get his hands up. Ties up Connor Gates, puts him over his shoulder, and we know how this goes. Hangs him out to dry. Goes to the cover. One, two, no. Right. 
Good timing coming off the top rope. Oh, diving knee drop from the top. Gates has got him tied up, puts him on the ropes. Kick to the leg. And now tangles him up in there. Tie style knee strikes. Wait for it. Boot to the face. Ikutami is sent reeling. Whoa! For a corkscrew plancha. Hits nothing but concrete. Had it concrete, but concrete nonetheless. Ooh, fights his way out from the bottom. Referee had a three count. We got a ten count. Tying up again, Ikutami Tommy throwing Connor Gates aside, gets his way back in. Gets his way back out. I mean, now got him on the shoulders. Looking for something large, drives him into the barricade. And you can see from this angle that the steel reinforcements on that barricade, that is not a soft landing. Tommy now resuming his assault on the arms. Throws him again, almost hitting him into the steps. Kind of gets maybe going down early on purpose for that one. Now a Tommy in the ring. Referee's at a six count. Kind of gets still no sign of movement. Nice to get up just as Iku Tommy breaks the count. Kick to the gut. Double axe handle. Oh, and a rear clothesline. And Gates might have hit his head on those steps on the way down. Tommy now on the top rope. Not very patient. Patient. Oh, looks for a diving fist drop, maybe. Kind of Gates gets out of the way. Equal Tommy is not dissuade in the slightest. Picks him up. Hangs him out to dry on the barricade. Three. And throws him. Oh, into the barricade. This time in the opposite corner. Adjacent corner. Got him up. Oh, he's got the Steiner recliner on him. The referee is at a, I want to say a four or five count, maybe a six count. There's the six count. Connor Gates finally makes his way back in the ring and waits for Iku Itami. Oh, twisted view! Looking to follow it up. Pulls him up. Call of the boy. Goes for the cover. Is that all she wrote? One, two. No, Iku Itami survives. Whoa, spread board. Moonsault misses. Tommy looking to follow up. Saito suplex. Goes for the cover. One, two. No, that is as close to three as you could get without ringing the bell. You can now look at a follow up. Connor fighting back. Both men exchanging blows. Trying to pull themselves ahead just by an inch. A couple of big shots Connor landed when he got back into the ring. They're paying dividends. Now a dragon sleeper. He doesn't have the hooks in. So it's not going to be completely as effective. But, oh, and that is also why you want the hips in. Siku Tommy freed it in with those back knees. Chicken wing. Chicken wing. That's the cover. One, two. No. Iku Tommy kicks out. Now, for a long time, Tommy was in very strong control. Bloody in rain. Doesn't go for the cover yet. Picks him up, and we're seeing it again. Heed the call on the void. One, 
No, wait, no ref. One, two. Oh, Iku Itami kicks out again. He's a monster, this guy. Okay, it's, oh, no water in the pool. I mean, now, now, watch those, those wrist wraps, man. That don't feel good when you chafe those on the face. You know what I'm saying? Up kick from Connor Gates. Uh, he's hit his home run twice now. Has been able to put him away. Yeah, I think a little bit of desperation settling into the mind of the former truthless hero. Beautiful lariat by Iku Tommy. This is the cover. One. No. Referee sees the rope break this time. You know, the camera can. And Connor Gates survives to fight another day. Now, once again, through that camel clutch. Iku Tommy leaning back on it. Can Gauntner escape? Can he escape? Is this too much? He doesn't tap. And Iku is forced to break the hold. But he's not dissuaded as Saito Suple. This is the cover one, two. No. Not quite it. Not quite yet. But Iku Itami is feeling fired up. Short arm lariat. What's he going for now? Another Saito suplex. Goes for the cover. One, two, three. That is all she wrote, ladies and gentlemen. The lights go out in London. Aziku Tommy pulls out a major victory over Cotton Gates. Possibly his biggest victory so far here in Ring Classic. If you want to make an impression to all those guys looking at the slew of free agents that are going to be coming out of that, a pretty good way to do it. You ask me. But what do I know? I'm just a guy. You know? Now, of course, go to on for a triple threat match. Of course, last episode, the crown, or rather the Ring Class Women's Champion defended her belt against Flint Bakar Steel. Interesting fact, all three of these women have held the belt. Ivy White won it from Diana Masters. Nancy Hammer won it from Ivy White. Flintlock Garcia won it from Nancy Hammer, and Nancy Hammer won it back from Flintlock Garcia. And here we are, a triple threat of former champions. These women have just been circling the cage at each other for so long now. And you know, the decision was made not to force the champion to defend so recently because all of these weak women have had their shots. They've had their opportunities. And right now, Nancy Hammer is very comfortably at the top of the division. She will enter into Super Pro Titan Clash with that belt. So the question is, who's the who's next in line? Who's the who comes out of here as the contender that someone else wants to scoop up? And who comes out of here as the one who's going to go into the world with the most potential? question and, and can Annex get a victory here on the last episode as Diana Masters teammates lost in the opener that's how you like making her way down All these women, you know, you're not going to get any intimidation from an enemy. They all know each other. They've all been in the room. I think Flintlock might have the least experience with these other two women. But Diana Masters and Ivy White know each other well. Like, when I say well, I mean well. 
And of course, the last time not because these women have been going to war. I don't know where that towel came from. Don't ask me. Final entrant of the trio. The most recent woman to hold the belt, besides the current champion, obviously, Flintlock Garcia. A woman who came in here as a surprise not too long ago. Really shook up the division. And can she do it here in the end, here tonight? Lot backstage, he said, "Hey, what do you feel about Ring Classic shutting its doors?" She said, "I, a pirate, never need no England." Which point I had to kind of explain a little bit that's not really what's happening, but like, you know, what are you gonna do? Also, I don't know why she sounds like that. She's like Jamaican or something. Um, She's a time traveler. Who knows? She could be familiar. I'd be right now. Oh, looking for something large on Diana Masters. Diana Masters manages to swing her momentum over. Counter it. Crucifix on it. Flintlock. I catch chop. Punch to the face. Just gets a hold of Flintlock. Center into Ivy White's corner. Comes off the rope. Beautiful leg drop. Coming again. Leg drop the other way. Boots to Ivy White as Flintlock forced to take some refuge on the outside. Now Ivy White sends Diana Masters to the outside. got chin clutch on the outside not going to finish the match but if you need to incapacitate an opponent it's one way to do it now Flintlock coming out ties up Diana Master sends her into the ring Ivy White now sets Flintlock away from the ring very curious not sure if she knows where Masters is as Masters comes out the other side oh Ivy White sends Flintlock right off the ring post and beats down Diana Masters beautiful elbow drop now getting a little action in on Masters, getting a little action in on White. There you go, little drop. This one's Masters into the ring. Big right hand. Tying her up. Oh, backbreaker. Now, slamming her head into the canvas Ivy White now firing up the crowd and if she was champion when this thing started if anybody's going to get sappy about you know send offs it might be Ivy White now biting the fingers is Footlock Garcia a effective but not sanitary strategy, you know? Butterfly DDT. Picks it back up. Slams her back down. Capitalized tying her up in a chin lock again. And this time in the ring, Ivy White has to break it up. Goes after Flintlock. Butterfly. Suplex. Flintlock already ba getting back up to her feet. Ivy White maybe not counting on that. Doesn't super matter. Gets dragon screwed by Diana Masters. Masters now turning her attention to Flintlock. Pump handle. Suplex. Oh, 
Oh, board buster by Ivy White. That face buster by... Oh! And that'll bust some faces as meat of the head. From Clint Garcia, now she goes to the top. Oh my god, did you see that hand time on that splash? Goes for the cover, one. No, only a one count. Touch the face. Touch the gut. Sticks her in the corner. Sends her into the opposite corner. Comes off. Bulldog! Now, Sunlock coming off the top rope. Wait, calling Ivy White to her feet. Oh, diving DDT! Goes for the cover. Diana Masters breaks it up. Diana Masters knew what was going on and waited until Flintlock did the absolute maximum amount of damage before coming in. But Ivy White, with enough time to recover, Simon's carry into that gut buster that doesn't need a gut buster. Oh, beautiful drop kick to the face. Single leg, one, two. No, not enough to put Diana Masters away, not just yet. Ivy White returning back to that clutch. And this time it's Flintlock that has to save Masters. Her up. Oh, fall away slam. I'd be white to the outside. Diana Masters fighting out from the bottom. Up to the back. It's her over. Wait. Cattle mutilation. She's got it synced in. I don't think Ivy White knows it's happening. Flintlock Garcia gonna be forced to submit. Now rolls her over, relieving some pressure. Gets an arm free, fights out of it. Just has her up. And hangs her at the drop. This is just throwing Fintlock around the ring. Trying to get just that extra little bit for a cover and then not sure, could have been broken up by Ivy White, could have been a kick out, very close either way. Now White trying to capitalize on the distraction. Flintlock luckily being able to recover out the outside, but if something happens in there, she's not gonna be around to break it up for a minute. Oh, crisis averted is now all three women on the outside. Dropping the knee. Dragon screw from the Masters. Drop breaker from White. Center sprawling. White taking a shortcut through the ring, getting the, over the Masters. Funlock back on her feet. Masters sends White into the barricade. Oh. Other woman wanting the other one to land any significant offense there. Torture rack for Ivy White. Oh, backbreaker. See ya. Right now, realizing the match can only be won in the ring, but you think it can only be lost in the ring, too. So you got to be careful with that. Fenlock now takes Diana to the ropes. Pops her up. Oh, hangs her out. Just fighting out of it. Oh, goes for the cover. No, popping up. Power bomb. Tying up with Ivy White. Perfect plex. Doesn't hold on to the pin. Knows Flintlock is in the ring. 
Doesn't want to expose herself for too long, but Flintlock's got a hold of her. Oh! Now Flintlock going up to the top rope. We saw this earlier. No, Swanton bomb! Shout out to Warboy Haas. Goes for the cover. That could be all she wrote. One, two, three, and Flintlock Garcia walks away with a win. A hard fight, hard battle war between these three women of Ring Classic. But in the end, it's a pirate's life for me, dog. Yeah, you goddamn scallywag. Of course, like I said, there's no guarantees. Who knows if we'll see Flintlock again, or when we'll see Flintlock again. But when she does, she will go in with her chin held high and a fucking steam engine full force ahead. Because now we have a curious match. You know, I told the story earlier. Jamie Clark able to win a tag match against the Annex. All by his lonesome. After being abandoned by his then tag team partner, Iku Tommy. Now he has the opportunity to tag match because he came away with that victory. It was so un unprecedented. But we don't know who his partner's going to be. Obviously, it's not Iku Tommy. I mean, how could you, you're not going to trust that guy again, right? So he has to come in with one of his own choosing. But they're fighting the Armstrong. And the Armstrong's been around for a while. And they recently won the titles. But oh my god, since winning those belts, the Armstrongs are another level. Did you ever see that King Armstrong Max Reeves match? Was like a video essay on how to do damage to people and not get sent to prison. It's honestly a little remarkable. So whoever it is that Jamie Clark selected to be his tag partner here. I sure hope they're ready for a fight. Because that is the only thing. That fighting spirit is what will get that championship victory. Hold on. It's the Dropkick Murphys. And that can only mean one thing. Timothy. Thatcher. He's making his way down the ring. Thatcher, of course, recently had a victory over Aiden Bourne. And off of that momentum coming in here. And might, just might, walk away with some gold. Winners of this match will go on to Pro Titan Clash Night 1. Main event will be crowned the new Super Pro Champions, Super Pro Tag Champions. And the match, we know one team is confirmed so far. It's the most Rudos Classic Wars. But who represents that team? Not sure yet. It's a trio. But they are currently the Super Pro Hybrid Champions, which is not exactly a tag. It's sort of convoluted. It don't, it's not going to matter after Titan 5, so won't get into it. Then we have the USW Tag Team Champions. That side they're going to be the Main Event Syndrome. Main Event Syndrome, the current tag champions or Coleman Country, which has been sort of just running rough shot over United States of Wrestling for the last six months or however long it's been. And if you're in a match like that, are you looking ahead? Are you overlooking your opponents? If you're the Armstrong brothers, are you already reserving your flights? Because I don't know if that's a great idea, but we are about to find out once and for all who will be the forever ring classic 
Tag Team Champions. Duke Armstrong trying to tie up. Jimmy Clark sent him off. Wants to tie up on his own terms. Arm ringer Lariat. Oh, very smooth jab to the face. And we're seeing this a, a couple times. Duke Armstrong, about the same height as Jamie Clark, but there's quite a weight difference. He's having a little bit of trouble overcoming that in these early games. Because as we know, as the match goes on, and the great father time makes the great equalizer, Duke might have some more success with those maneuvers. But in the immediate future, he's got to be careful about getting overpowered by Jamie Clark. Beautiful double underhook. DDT. Oh, up kick from Duke. A big right hand from Thatch. Hip toss. Hip toss. And now an elbow drop. Armbar. Referee keeping an eye on him. And Duke fights out of it. Belly to belly. Enough force on that thing. Almost launched him back into his home corner, but now Duke crawls his way out. Tags in King. Slice through body. Chopping up. King returns the favor. Puts him in the corner. Armstrong with the impressive clean press. Drop. Trying to sling him around the ring. Thatcher. Taking a lot of offense here. Needs to snake out the back end. Chopping away at the tree. That is King Armstrong. Jimmy Clark tagged in. Big shots. King Armstrong overpowering the back clutch. The top rope. Punch the face. Thatcher choosing not to interfere. Ooh. Backdrop onto the apron and now putting all of that body weight onto that lower back. Dropping the elbow. Three. Four. Right there. Even the clothesline from Jimmy Clark does not floor King Armstrong. Seems him sprawling into the apron. Now, King Armstrong, horizontal, less of a threat. Jamie Clark needs to capitalize. However, the ref is at a six count. Seven count. Throws him back into the ring. Now, Duke Armstrong in. Strikes the ref trying to get King out. A little slow to get back onto his apron. Now Jamie hangs Duke out to drive. Picks him up. Yuranagi. Going for the cover. King Armstrong able to break it up. Come over here. David Clark taking a look at the big man. Doesn't want him to interfere. Ops to tag and Thatcher. Now Thatcher picking Duke up. Picking the leg. Turn him over into the single Boston crab. Oh, and King Armstrong able to break it up. We saw Jamie Clark there. Thought he was going to interrupt, then thought he wasn't going to interrupt. Good patience by King, but he's got just been thrown out. Is Duke out of it? No. Oh, 
Got you now. He's got the Fujiwara. He's wrenching back on it. He might have to tap. And he does. We have new ring classic tag team champions in Timothy Thatcher and Jamie Clark. Frustrating for the Armstrong brothers to have come so close to the immortality of being the final ring classic tag team champions, but then to let it slip away on the finale episode. But they had no way of predicting what kind of challenge they would face with Jimmy Clark's mystery partner and Thatcher more than delivered. Yeah, I think Jimmy Clark is pretty thankful for Iku with Tommy walking out on that match last episode. He's now. Jimmy Clark and Timothy Thatcher who call themselves champions. Will they remain that way after Super Pro Titan Clash is the question we will have to answer later. Because the Ring Classic Heavyweight Championship must now be decided in our main event of the evening. The last ever Ring Classic match has Ebak, who has been champion since episode one, defends that title against Barton Trey. And we see Barton Drake taking a more traditional garb this form of combat. We've seen him don this a couple times. First time he won Kumite to control Super Pro Championship Wrestling. Now he finds himself in a situation where if he can win this he must be allowed back into the promotion that booted him out not so long ago. He must be allowed to confront El Dragon Rojo and all the other champions from Super Pro from the United States of Wrestling and to once again prove in a tournament format that he is the best. But first, he's got to prove that he's the best here in Ring Classic. He has to conquer the unconquerable reign of Ebet. And when I say unconquerable, I mean unconquerable. The resume this man has, Connor Gates, Malachi Black, Oliver Awesome, Sam. The man is no stranger to fighting. No stranger to being a champion. No stranger to being the flag bearer of a brand. Former Warder member has held on to that title for the entirety of this show's existence, but he is not about to get rid of it so easily here that he has reached the end of the road. But it's a curious stylistic matchup. Physically very similar. Say both guys are around the same size, around the same strength, speed, agility. But it's tendency that is the, the true difference. See back, he likes to keep things spread out, long range. Right, that's set up for the NVIDIA driver, of course. You know, taking half the distance of the ring. Barton Drake, on the other hand, he's a striker, almost strictly. Right, he's got educated feet, as people might say, and he can pull a cutter out of just about anywhere. Makes him extremely dangerous. But just because you're dangerous doesn't mean you're a danger to the champ. 
There's many predators in the jungle. Only one of them can be king. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Big fight feel here in London, England. The final big fight. Starting off with the strikes early. Barton Drake wasted no time. Backbreaker. Round kick to the back. Be back sweeping the leg. Oh, beautiful. Wheel kick. That's Barton with the up kick. back into the corner get to the gut now some tiny knees who ordered the tiny knees you see Barton Drake targeting that abdominal a lot what that's going to do is that's going to pull slowly Evax guard down Kamagoya lays him out he dropped to the arm. Now he's going up top. Oh, big stomp. Cut her. That could be sure all she wrote. New champion. New champion. One, two. No, he back kicks out. And I was about to say, Ebak is in trouble, but he is in even more right now. Tornado kick. I think that split him open. One, two, no. Oh, misses the spring bar moonsault. A little excited, but Barton Drake is in firm control of this match, and he has made the championship god of ring classic bleed. And he is not about to let up now. There's blood in the water. Suplex. No, face buster. And another knee to the face. Targeting now the head almost very exclusively. Two count almost enough to put him away. Drake now pouring it on, stomps the gut. Oh, Springboard Moonsault misses. He back with a drop kick. He back's got fire up here. He's holding on to that title by his fingertips right now, but he's got to hold on tight. Going up top. What's he waiting for? He back a little hesitant there. Didn't want to take the high risk. Let's see what that... Wait. Boots all attack. Playing possum was Ebak. Face fire Miss Carey. Hangs him out to dry. Boots. Boots and chests and boots and chests and boots and chests. Picking him up. Big chop. Another big chop. Snap mare. Elbow to the top of the head. Now, once again, Ebak goes up to the top rope. No hesitancy this time. Oh! And that is what he was trying to avoid before as Barton Drake got the knees up. Picks him up. We've seen this before. Another. Oh! Up kick by Ebak. Jawbreaker. Wait a minute. One more time. All right, Drake has been going back to that well over and over again. Whoa, another cyclone kick. A tornado kick. A hurry kick. One, two. Whoa. Oh. Barton Drake could smell the belt. That was how close he was to Victor. He back with a big lariat. Trying to fire his way back. No, kick, punch to the gut. Cutter. Good for it. One more time. Tornado kick. 
Goes for the cover. One, two, new champion. Three. Martin Drake is your ring classic heavyweight champion. Your final ring classic heavyweight champion. He will be entering Super Pro Titan Clash. He'll be entering the championship Grand Prix. He'll be walking into the doors that he was thrown out of and will seek to conquer Super Pro one more time. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been your commentator for this evening and for everyone here at Rink Classic, it has been an honor. Good night.